Ideally, I want John Jones next. I feel like someone need, like we need to unify the title right now. There's two heavyweight champions in the world, and in my opinion, this is not right. This is not boxing. You you don't have multiple champions in a weight. You have one champion, in my opinion. At the end of the day, I need one shot to win a fight, and uh, I'll have 25 minutes to do it. So I believe that I can land the shot on both of them. It's obviously been a few weeks now since that win at UFC 295. How do you look back at that? Uh, I, I think it was special. I think it was special. Not just winning the title, the interim title, let me add, but uh, still a world champion. But um, I think under the circumstances that I did it and under the, the opponent who I, who I faced and the arena that it was in, I think it was very, very special, mate. And uh, it's a moment that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I was going to ask that, obviously, Madison Square Garden, the kind of Donald Trump's in the crowd, it yeah. was like, it wasn't just a, a fight, it was like an event, wasn't it? Yeah. How, how, does it, how do you come to terms with the magnitude of an event like that? To be honest, I just try and focus all the time on my opponent. I, do, I try and take that, because all that other stuff that can build up so much in your mind. And uh, even to the point where I could see, like in the, in the changing rooms, we had the TV, and the TV shows what the people at home can see. And obviously they're showing celebrities and these superstars showing up. And I didn't want to watch because the more you know who's watching, the more pressure is on you. And uh, so I wasn't even watching. I didn't even know Trump was there until I was literally, so I always start off in that crouch down position. The reason I do that is because I feel like it opens my hips up pretty well for in case I want to throw kicks. That's why I, that's why I do it. Uh, and I started off in that spot, same as I usually do, and literally right behind Pavlovich was Donald Trump. And I seen him literally seconds before the fight started. And yeah, I was taken back by it. <laughs> Donald Trump is crazy. Is that the, the kind of, the, I don't know what the right word is, the least likely person you expected to see like at a UFC event you've been to? Uh, I know he's been at... He's been at UFC events before, so, um, but I, I didn't know he was coming. I had no idea. Um, and I know there was a lot of other there was actors there, singers there, you know, rappers there, other UFC. But the, the people that I look to, up to the most are other UFC fighters. Like, I'm a massive fan of the sport, and there were so many stars there that night, UFC stars, that it was just crazy to think that, like, I did that in front of them. It was it's good stuff, mate. Brilliant. And then he taught me through kind of the emotions of taking the belt which you got over your shoulder back to your friends, your family. What's, what's that moment like when you come back with... with you know your... what, I feel like obviously everyone was happy for me, everyone was, you know, really over the moon for me, but everyone expected it. Like I feel like my close circle, they just knew that I was destined to be a champion one day. Um, I obviously felt the same, but I obviously feel like... Um, I've got a lot more work to do. I'm nowhere near satisfied with what I've done so far. I'm really happy that I've ticked that box and I'm a UFC champion. Now I've got to vacate and now I've got to, um, I've got to win the undisputed title. That's next on my list. And after that is being the best heavyweight ever. And I think I'm well capable and well on track to doing that. You've obviously gone on record and saying you want Stipe next. Yep. Why, why him next? Um, well, Ideally, I want John Jones next. I feel like someone need, like we need to unify the title right now. There's two heavyweight champions in the world, and in my opinion, this is not right. This is not boxing. You you don't have multiple champions in a weight. You have one champion, in my opinion, and uh, he has he's a champion, and I'm a champion right now. Um, and we need to unify that. We need to find out who the best guy is. But right now, John Jones is un unavailable. The other available guy who was ready to fight for the title is Stipe. And I think it just makes the most sense. Like, it's not rocket science. I'm aware that there's other contenders underneath me. Um, now, the thing is, the, the dispute that I've got against that with the guys who are ranked below me now is I'm going to have years to fight them. I've just turned 30. I've got another 10 years at this sport. Um, I'm not going to have years to fight John Jones or Stipe. Like, them guys are right at the, the back end of the career. And... I want them guys on my resume. You know, we're talking about John Jones there, who people say is the greatest fighter of all time. We've got Stipe, who people say is the best heavyweight of all time. I want their names on my resume and I want to be in the win column. And 
I think that, that, yeah, that's the reason I want it. I think that I've got years to fight these other guys and it's inevitable that I'm going to fight them, but I've got a short window to fight Stipe or John Jones and I want to I wanna explore that opportunity while I can. Yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Have there been any conversations with, with Dana about that, about how the next couple of fights, six months, a year, mm. plays out? I've had no conversations just yet. Um, I know that Dana and the UFC brass, they wanted they want to do the legacy fight, let's call it, between uh, between Jones and Stipe. Um, but it's my job to convince them otherwise. And I just knocked out the scariest guy in the heavyweight division in a minute without a training camp. I've got a whole country behind me. I've got a belt now for myself. Let's do it, why not? So our good friend Michael Bisping has gone on record and says he believes you'll become the most successful UFC heavyweight ever. What's that like to hear from from someone you know well and someone yeah. you obviously admire? Well, I'll just start by saying me and Bisping are good friends. Bisping's one of my best friends, so he's, I would expect him to say nice things about me. But on the flip side of that, Bisping's not just some fellow in, like in a bar watching who, who's never trained in his life. Like Bisping is. You know, he's an absolute pioneer of not only UK MMA, but MMA in general. The guy's a, a former champion himself. The guy's now a commentator. His knowledge on the sport is like off the charts. So, yeah, I would definitely expect him to say good things about me because we're friends. But also, he's not a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. And, uh, you know, you never know in my division. It's absolutely insane. You never know. Nothing's guaranteed in MMA, especially at heavyweight. So I'm not going to say I'm, I'm going to go the rest of my career unbeaten because that's unrealistic. But do I think I have the skills to be the best heavyweight ever? Absolutely. And I know obviously Cyril Garn turned down the opportunity to fight you. If the opportunity to fight Stipe or John Jones doesn't mm -hmm. happen, are there any other targets you're looking that way or is it still one track mind at the minute? Of course, but um, the, the, there's me and Cyril Garn have got years to fight. You know, we're both pretty young in our careers. Me and Almeida have got years to fight. Me and guys like Volkov, who's on a rise again, we've already fought, but we're probably going to fight again. You know, I, I understand all this, but I don't have years to fight Jones or Stipe. I've got a small window and I want to take that opportunity while I can. You know what I mean? I want to shoot my shot and I want, I want them guys' name on my, my resume before they retire. And are those fights you've kind of visualised, you've thought through? How do you think you're... Your style combats, I guess, against Stipe first and then, and then John Jones second? Um, I think that heavyweight MMA has its own rules, first of all. I think that you're never one shot away from disaster. In MMA in general, but especially at heavyweight. And when you're talking about a guy with the resume that I've got, with absolutely insane speed and movement for a heavyweight but not only that is I've got massively underrated power as well like I have to hit you one time and that's it same as any other heavyweight really uh, but I make really good decisions man under pressure and I'm not going to be thrown off by fighting one of the one of the guys with their resume um, and I can I need one shot against both of the guys one shot is all I need and uh, I hit so fast that these guys don't see the shots and yeah, that's all I need. Just one shot with a pair of them. So the, the same the same rule goes for both of them. We can, we can talk about all the credentials of the grappling, of the stand-up, of the defence, of the offence, of getting up off my back and, and all kinds of different stuff that people will break the, the fight down into, I'm sure, on YouTube with all these experts and people like Bispin and, and Catterall and all, all Ariel Hawani and all these guys who break fights down and, and chat about fights. But the end of the day, I need one shot to win a fight and uh, I'll have 25 minutes to do it. So I believe that I can land the shot on both of them. Brilliant. And is there a date, a venue that you'd like to, you'd like to see one of those fights come about? I think UFC 300 works perfectly. Um, obviously, Jones is unavailable right now. So me and, me and Stipe at 300. I think that's like April, May time, which is, you know, we're in de nearly December now. Um, that gives us a perfect amount, like six months in between fights, quick turnaround. Uh, you know, I've just had three, uh, two fights in three months. So, you know, a little bit of downtime and then get straight back into training. I'm already back training. I was training five days after I, after I just won the fight. So, um, yeah, I'll be ready to go around UFC 300. That'll be perfect. Or, I know they're talking about bringing the UFC to Manchester in uh, 
June, July time, so that works equally as well. That's amazing. And what would that mean to you to fight in Manchester? Oh, that would mean everything to me. Like, um, first of all, my dream venue to fight was the O2 Arena, being a UK guy, especially being a Northern guy. Like, London seems so far away for us, especially like the O2 and stuff. Um, I fought the O2 three times now. The, the, the place after that that I really wanted to fight was MSG. Obviously, my last fight was in MSG. Won the interim title in MSG. And uh, now I think it's time for a little homecoming, you know. I think I would love to bring the USA back to Manchester. That's an absolute dream.